Welcome to a brand new type of video, one that I've never done before. If you don't really want to continue watching, I don't mind, but if you do, just know that you're a homie or really like silly bad games. Today I'm going to be beating Duke Nukem Forever on insane difficulty. If you don't know, Duke Nukem Forever is an FPS with some puzzle aspects here and there. It's also regarded as, well, not very well liked by most people. Let's jump right in, shall we? I start my day the same way any other person does. Take a piss, take a shit, take the shit with me, throw the shit at someone, and remind you that only 20% of my viewers seeing the giant cycloid emperor makes me thirsty, so I stop for a drink. Drinking in the game makes me thirsty in real life, so I go get a drink in real life. I use my air fists to punch the aliens from afar, and then take on the cycloid emperor himself. This boss fight is pretty easy, being at the start of the game and all, it just takes a bunch of time since it's insane difficulty. After dispatching the alien, I use his eye to score a point in the sports game. Afterwards, I arrive in the real world and immediately drown my sorrows in the hot tub. Later down the line, I use a kid's private belongings as a coloring book, practice my dribbling, and head to the Duke Cave. The Duke Cave goes very well, all things considered. It's filled with throwable objects and, as you can see, they will one-shot all common enemies. And this feature helps me throughout the entire game. In the weight room, I practice my dance moves, show that I am indeed balling, and lift some weights to get swole. After this, the night vision mechanic is introduced, but it's pretty painful to look at, so I'll try not to include too much footage of it. Here's where the challenge began, the mothership battle. It's a turret section, so I can't move, so the only thing I can do if I fail is shoot better. However, I can exploit the turret slightly by spam clicking instead of holding the button down, as it lets the turret cool down between shots. Letting two of the alien ships pass me will kill me, and I need to be very precise and efficient. This is actually where I found out the fight has a timer. If you don't destroy the mothership in a certain amount of time, it will just shoot at you until you die. Never had that happen before. Five deaths later, and I finally got through it, giving me a first taste of insane difficulty. Back inside, I activate Smurf Mode and live out every kid's dream of driving a mini car. Driving around the casino, I managed to get lost on a linear level, picked up a shotgun, played a gotcha game, got lost again, and found out that a trash can is more lethal than the shotgun I just picked up. Here's a brief montage of me killing things with it. trash can, my beloved. I even got a double kill with it, so I asserted my dominance to the alien corpses afterwards. I got to an impasse here. I needed to go through this vent, but I can't crouch while holding this trash can. So I did the only thing I could have, and chucked it into the vent and pushed it through. My efforts were for naught though, as it seemingly disappeared as I dropped out. Now I'm on to my first boss, the Battle Lord. He was easy enough thanks to the constant cover I have in the middle of this arena, and since the RPG has homing capabilities. The only thing I really had to worry about was timing when to go out for my cover to restock an ammo, almost dying a few times because of it. But I managed to kill him without dying, so that's a win. Now here's where it gets annoying. I'm in the hive now, and the biggest problem enemy is introduced here, the Octobrains. They fly around and throw shit at you and have a ton of health. They also take out nearly my entire health bar with each attack. Luckily they aren't common, but they're a pain in the ass when they do show up. After dying a couple of times to the same Octobrain segment, I kill all of them, fail some parkour to get more ammo, and I die some more trying to do the segment I just completed. On the climb to Duke Burger, I come across my biggest enemy, aside from Octobrains, the turret section. I dreaded this so much that I just quit for the day when I saw it. What you see here was my genuine reaction. Going back into it the next day, I gave it a shot before literally looking up a video on how to do it, and then doing it shortly after. Turret sections are not fun. Nothing exciting happened in Duke Burger, so I'm on the roof now, in a stand your ground section. Here I'm introduced to the Shrink Ray, which shrinks enemies and lets me stomp them. This section lasted a lot longer than I thought it would, so I'm glad I actually forgot about the second Shrink Ray here, or else I'd be pretty stuck on the tougher enemies that come down the line.
Now I'm on to the monster truck segment, headed for the Hoover Dam to secure New Vegas for the NCR. Overall not too fun, but I make it through easy enough. This thing has worse gas mileage than a Hummer with lung cancer, so I make frequent stops to get more gas. Now atop the Hoover Dam, I slap the president for being a big fat doo-doo head, and move on to the next boss, the Battle Lord from earlier. I remember struggling in this fight on hard difficulty last time I played, but the only death I had here was self-inflicted since my brain is a sphere. The strategy here is to hide behind the cars while he shoots you, but you have to be careful with which car you pick, because if it's in the middle of the road, he'll kick it out of the way. I looked out and found this bus on the side that he couldn't kick. I also thought he had three phases, but it turns out he only had two, so that was a relief. With the Battle Lord out of the way for good, take a dive off the Hoover Dam and get inside. Here I'm introduced to the Freeze Ray, which I have to pick up in order to get through this door. I try it and immediately put it down because it's pretty bad. I was somewhere around here where I found out that the game has headshot multipliers and that the 1911 has a quadruple headshot multiplier instead of just the usual double. So very rarely did I put the pistol down after that. I also killed a normal sized enemy with uh I killed a normal sized enemy with small sized duke, get distracted by buttons, and head out to kill some more octobastards. This is where the Octa King shows up to play. I was stuck in the corner with this turret, but luckily it was just him and his attacks were stopped by his railings, my savior. There was another stand your ground section, much like the Duke Burger roof, only this time it was very annoying. I stopped playing for the day after failing a couple times to do this, and then picked the rest up the next day. It took me 15 minutes to finally beat it, which might not sound like a lot, but it certainly felt like a lot. Somewhere along the way I dropped my Devastator, but my efforts here were rewarded after I got a companion barrel and put it on a heart, which opened the door to a Devastator. Which is weird, because they give you a Devastator anyway for the next section. Now, I would argue here that this next section is the hardest section of the whole run. On the crane here, a couple of enemies spawn here and there, but when it gets to the end, the Octa King comes up and spawns Octobastards. The problem isn't the boss, the problem is the number of Octobrains present and the complete lack of cover from them. The little covered area in the corner provides no protection, unlike the safety rails from earlier, and the Octobrains will throw all explosives back to you, so no rockets or Devastator to deal with them. However, you can throw pipe bombs and detonate them before they throw them back at you. I was so dumbfounded by this fight that I had to look up 10 year old videos about doing it. I had to make sure I lead the Octobastard's projectiles and move away before they hit me. A lot easier said than done though. I died 9 times before I managed to get the Octa King down to 2 thirds of his health, which is when the Octobrain stopped spawning and make the fight doable. At this point it's just leading the big guy's shots and dodging them long enough while you shoot the crap out of them. These bosses soak up damage like a teenager soaks up pizza rolls. It took me a total of 25 minutes to beat this boss, and it was definitely the hardest section of the entire run. I forgot to record the boss I fought underwater, but it wasn't that cool anyway. No deaths, and I just refilled my Devastator on the ammo crates. After literally blowing up the Hoover Dam, the President enacts the order to, ironically, nuke Duke Nukem. He dies, and it's time for the final fight with the Cyclid Emperor. I start with nothing but my trusty 1911 pistol, but as the fight goes on, pig cops with RPGs will spawn, and I have to take their RPG ammo to do damage to the Emperor. Like I mentioned before with the Octa King, the Cyclade Emperor soaks up those pizza rolls, so the fight did take a while, but it was actually very easy. I didn't even die in this fight. In the third phase, my military friendos dropped a Devastator for me, and I finished off the Emperor. Only thing left to do was get out of there before the nuke got there. I grabbed the General's hand, finally beating Duke Nukem on insane difficulty. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed. This was a very ambitious idea I had one day, and I was scared I might not go through with it like I would with most big projects, but I'm very happy I pulled through and did it. I'm gonna make a similar video with Duke Nukem's DLC campaign as well, which hopefully won't take as long as this, but I think it'll be just as entertaining. Thanks for watching.